Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. We're here talking with the crew and designers and creators of A Very COVID Christmas Carol. And I'm Kristen Marks, and I'm one of the co-founders of Nomad Theater. And we're going to go around and just everyone introduce themselves, say your name, and what your role is. Hi, I'm Fanny. I'm the stage manager. Hi, I'm Connie. I'm co-producer um, and creative media and sound design. Hi, I'm Lolu, and I'm the tech video editor. Hi, I'm Britannia Howe, and I'm the director. Hello, I'm Trey Brazil, and I'm the design liaison. Awesome. Well, we have a great team here, but we wanted to explain to our audiences a little bit about how this live stream production is different than perhaps a Zoom reading or other productions that you may have seen. So I wanted to start out a little bit talking with um, our director, uh, Britannia, to tell us a little bit about why this show um, was something she wanted to be a part of and how this um, the themes of the show um, are, are appropriate for today. So tell us a little bit about that, Danny. I mean, Britannia. Yes, I'd be, yeah, I'd be happy to. <laughs> yeah, when I first read this script and saw that it was an adaptation of A Christmas Carol, I immediately fell in love just because all growing up, my father would read us A Christmas Carol every Christmas and we would watch many, many films of A Christmas Carol. So this is the present day Christmas Carol, a COVID Carol. It's about redemption and the damaging effects of isolation, which I think we're facing right now and the importance of love and compassion, right? So a lonely, greedy billionaire with ample privilege learns empathy. And in return, he is forgiven by so many people. So I think it's a really beautiful story for our time right now. And the script is lively and joyous and it's very active. And it's more than just people reading a script in front of their face. Um, as you'll find out from all of this, this fabulous team, how they're able to uh, add different tech elements and videos and animation and all of these different innovative ways make the story really come to life through the screen. And one of my favorite things that I think through this process is that it has such a sense of community as we have children and families involved in this production. It's the largest production that I've ever done over Zoom. I think we, I don't know the exact number of cast members we have, but we have many people in this cast. So yeah, it's just really exciting and I'm so glad that I'm able to work with these fabulous artists. Awesome. That brings me to Trey because we have so many families in so many places and so many locations. Um, you were tasked with creating a virtual world for all of these people. How did that even happen? And how do you do that? Um, <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of funny because as I was looking through four ideas for a production I was making on my own, uh, Connie and Kristen commented on the Facebook post of mine and said, hey, do you want to help? And honestly, I, yes, I did, just because I've missed being able to create art with people so much. Um, and I know all these, and I knew a couple of these lovely people already. And so just to you know, come in and we interact uh, with people that I've already known was a great and fun thing for me. Um, the challenge, however, of course, is I'm, Majority, majority a lighting designer. And thus, um, everything I've created has been on an actual stage. And so um, being tasked, tasked with the virtual background uh, kind of design of it um, helped me to brush off some of the Photoshop skills that I had learned while I was in grad school um, and bring those back out uh, and then being able to look through the script and figure out a way to make this Christmas Carol, but make it modern and make it um, make it feel as if it is in the 21st century, and still make the characters feel as if they are within a place that says this is our set, um, as well as creating the magic of some of the lighting as. 
uh, you will see with Jacob Marley and how they're in a silhouette effect um, and how to kind of connect with them, uh, while not being there in person has been a challenge, but something that's been really thrilling to figure out. And um, I don't know, I'm just really excited and can't wait for you all to see. Yay. Speaking of uh, Jacob Marley, um, Lolu, you were tasked with filming some of our scenes so that although we're streaming live, there are some scenes that are pre-recorded for special effects. So tell us a little bit about how you got involved in this and how you got an interest in film editing. All right. Well, when I first started off, I just started off as a happy camper that was just willing to help by any ways necessary. Um, as far as, uh, let me start from the beginning. Um, when it comes to filming, filming has been my number one passion, something I always wanted to do since high school. It's just due to circumstances in life, I never really had a chance to tackle it until later on in college, where you know I met a lovely artistic director named Reese Lovell that kind of got me into acting. And I started acting, and then you know what? I forgot all about filming. So when I met Connie, and Connie's like, well, we might have to, uh, Connie and Christian, you know, when they were talking about the project, and having to, we might have to film some of it. I was like, like Bob, you can do it. <laughs> so I'll, I offered my volunteer services and, you know, it's been a lovely thing. You know, it's been nice to be able to put my skills to, you know, test and work it out. You know, the easiest part is filming it. The hardest part is editing it. So. <laughs> yeah, but, the editor's job is often overlooked, but it is so important, right? Yeah, it's but like I said, it's it's been a joy and it's been a, a wonderful experience to you know, like I said, put my skills to the test for Nomad Theater and be able to op, you know offer my my uh, I don't know how would I say offer my my work and my skills Your talents yes yeah. my talents to the cause of COVID Carol Christmas so awesome well Connie you also worked closely with Lolu because you basically have created many of the media and digital and sound effects for the show so in, in addition to being a, a, an incredible actress director you are now credited with being this creative artist so tell us where that came from and how you made it happen um it was catapulted <laughs> by the show. I never, <laughs> I never thought that those were hats that I would ever wear. I, I never, um, I never considered myself um, uh, able to do those things. Um, and and I think that um, one of the silver linings of this pandemic and sort of this time that we've had to pause um, and this show has been that. Um, I've, I've discovered a lot more things that I'm capable of. And I think that when you and I read the script, Kristen, there were so many things in the script. We knew we wanted to do it live, and I think that when Britannia agreed to direct, she also wanted to do it live because that's the magic of theater, right? And I think we missed it so much that, you know, we said we need to do this live. And I, there were so many elements of the show that we just were like, how are we going to do this live? So. In the midst of figuring out how we were going to stream and where that was going to come from and figuring out what we were capable of doing in the, the streaming uh, platform that we were going to use, um, we sort of discovered new ways to create elements in the streaming platform. So I think it was really fun for me to kind of go through and, and realize, hey, I, I, think I, can, I think I can do this. I, I like the discovery of being able to create these videos, um, but also like if we're going to do this live, it's got to happen. So also kind of having that fire underneath me too, to have to, the need to solve, to solve the problems and solve the technical issues that, um, or the technical elements that, that were required for the show. And there are plenty of them. Yes. <laughs> and Danny, you're the one in charge of calling those. So although Connie and, and Trey and Lolu have created these things, um, and, and, and Britannia has kind of created the vision, you are the person who it's all in your hands on the streaming night. So how is being a stage manager different um, in when you're in a live production on stage than it is from this crazy virtual experience that we're doing? Yeah, I think it has been quite different. Uh, and it's been fun seeing how I can modify what I've been doing for quite a while and make it work virtually. Um, Typically, when I'm calling a show, most of the people are in the exact same room as me, and you can just quickly relay information. So finding different ways to kind of communicate with Connie and people backstage, 
and um, just kind of really be flexible on how we can change and adapt and make sure everything goes on at the right time has been really fun. And it's been um, a learning curve, but it's been great. So Britannia, you have to direct, but you like, so you would tell Danny where you want the actors to be in the screen. So that's, you know, taking what you would do on a stage with stage right and stage left with telling how they want to appear every single time on the screen and then Danny being able to interpret that. How, how does that work? With that's directing? right. Yeah. So in a way, composition, I liked what Danny said about adapting, right? So composition still exists. It's just adapting to this type of form of live theater over Zoom right? Or over StreamYard, which we're using. So we're able, the beautiful thing about the platform that we're using is we are able to change boxes on where they are, we're able to make them big or make them small. And that will help us tell the story. And so I, Danny and I have had a really close relationship and we've communicated on what will help tell the story. If we have Scrooge really big in this moment and he's viewing the past and we have these dates on the bottom, so we know that this is in the past, all of that is being created. And so it's actually really helpful that we have these tools now that we're able to um, do it in an innovative or you know adapt it in that type of way. But also when talking to the actors, we've done the same thing, right? So in composition, that just means that this square right here is my playing space. So I can still go stage left, I can still go stage right, I can still go down stage and I can still go up stage and we can still have composition and playing space even though we have a camera right in front of us. Awesome. Trey, that brings me a little bit back to you and then I'll get to you, Connie. Of the backgrounds that you created, the environments, what do you think, which was the most challenging or one of your favorites that you created? Um, one of my favorites definitely has to be uh, the Jacob Marley ghost background um, because <laughs> most of, because, because I wasn't, when I looked at that one, it was, when I first, the first thing I gave uh, Britannia for that one, uh, it was something that was um, a little more hellscape-ish where like you saw fire and brimstone and like lava coming out of the ground, something that was a little too out there. Um, but then we got more talking about it. We got into uh, talking about it a little bit more and we kind of decided on it just being in this uh, spectral plane where uh, we didn't really know where they were and then I was like, uh, I wanted, I wanted to feel like there were spec spectral beings in the background. Um, so it's not just Jake and Marley. Um, that's when I began uh, putting layers upon layers of things. Uh, and so a couple of the backgrounds with that, uh, the main background for that is just like this smoky, uh, grayish outfield, uh, well, field area. Where then um, I Google search and I found these ghosts um, that I then layered onto that. And then I just threw a big red color onto it, overlaid all of that and softened the ghost specters' faces so like they're actually coming out of the smoke. Um, so that was my favorite one because it was the most fun creative that I got to be. Um, I think my most challenging one was trying to find the right boarding school for young Scrooge. Uh, because again, it, it, we wanted to bring it into a more modern time. And in a lot of the research that I did, a lot of the modern looks, um, they either had maybe one or two bedrooms within the little dorm spaces for the boarding school. Um, whereas some of the older ones had like 16 or 18 beds all in a row in one big room. And I just, I needed to look between the two and figure out which one felt the most right uh, for young school. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Connie, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, you know, um, along with what Britannia said and Trey talking a lot about how we're really studying this in the modern the modern world, that's, I think, the one thing that I really love about the Pamela's adaptation is it, of course, puts us with this story that's so well known with Scrooge and what happens in the end, but it puts us, puts Scrooge in 2020 during the pandemic. So he's visited by ghosts, but it's it's this 2020 world of avatars. So they can't be in the same room with him, right? Because it's the pandemic or all of this. So everything's happening. Um, he's communicating 
doing all this communicating on the screen, just like the rest of us are right now. And, and so it's just really cool to see, you know, when he's seeing things in the future, he's seeing them the way we would on social media, you know, on Instagram pages, on Facebook pages. I mean, it really puts us, um, puts the story in our world, which I think is what's really fun, fun about it. I really yeah. love that working on it in the script where he's looking at the future seeing, you know, like in the story, his possessions being sold off. And um, the way Pamela decided to do that via a modern twist of how would you sell things, you know, in a, in a pandemic to sell them off? Well, you would use social media. So I think you did a really great job of kind of creating those, uh, those virtual advertisements for his possessions as well. Right. We have a lot of children in the show, and so uh, that that creates its own special problem. Um, animals and children are the two things you're never supposed to work with. Um, so can um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it to either Britannia or Danny when it comes to working with the kids. We love them; they're adorable. But what are the challenges of having, um, you know, kids on their own learning all this technology um, and and doing a show at the same time? Well, I'll start and then we can turn it over to Danny. These kids are so smart and they're so sharp and they're so on top of it. And and they're just adorable to work with. Um, some of my background is I used to, uh, you know, teach and was in education and I, I still consider myself an educator. And so this was just um, second nature for me and it was really fun. Um, but I can tell you that some of the challenges is bedtime because we usually rehearse at nighttime when it's usually their bedtime. Um, they love technology and they're so great at technology. Sometimes we use the chat as like cueing people, right? And I would say that one of the challenges that we have is that these kiddos will like message each other back and forth. And we've had to remind them that this is for queuing, that Danny is gonna queue you through the chat. So please don't hop on and put little, you know, emojis or smiley faces on there. Um, but we, we, we'll, we'll take them, we'll take them every time. Yeah, I think just going along with that, it's for me, I love working with kids, it's really fun. And they are more capable than I think we give them credit for sometimes. Um, but it sure. is fun. There are, there have been a few difficult moments in terms of how how do I build a relationship with these kiddos through the screen for me? Um, because I think that's also important when I'm working with the cast is trying to build those relationships. But it's been fun overall, and I really do enjoy it. Awesome. I'm telling you, they're fabulous. I mean, the future is bright with these ones. They have figured it out for sure. And their parents are so supportive. So thank you, parents. Yeah, thank um, you. Is there anything it. else that we need to let our audience know about about this this production that we'll be streaming? I'm just excited for people to see it. There's been a lot of people who've been working hard on this, not just the faces that you see here. Um, but you know, the actors have been just working so hard and they're so committed. And I think that people will really enjoy it. It's 75 minutes and it's an hour 15. And it's something that you can gather your family around and your littles around, has an excellent message. Um, it's fun, it's joyous. Um, but you know, it's also a little bit gritty. So it has everything. It does have everything. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, if anyone is interested, we're going to post all the information um, about how to get tickets and send you to our social media pages and our website for ticket information. Um, thank you guys for staying and chatting about the show. And hopefully we will see everybody online on Thursday streaming live from Nomad Theater. Bye, guys. Okay, was that really dorky?